right, today I have a combi oven that's blowing the breaker fuse every three weeks. Very intermittent problem. So let's go into this uh, breaker disconnect here. And the electrician has already changed the fuse for us. Uh, I was hoping to meet him on site, but that's okay. So I just want to go in here and see which fuse they changed. And it looks like it's this top one here, so L1. So based on the other service calls prior, L1 was the one that was definitely blowing. Alright, so we're going to start by pulling up a schematic. So every time we're blowing that main fuse in the breaker, or in that disconnect, we're blowing these two relays right here. So these two relays, they're actually failing closed. So when we don't have a call for heat, these are failing closed like that. Okay, so let's just go and see why would these relays blow? So let's kind of just study that and then this should give us a hint towards what might be the fault as to why we keep blowing that fuse and why it's blowing intermittently. Okay, so if we follow this circuit really quickly, so we have our power in coming from up top here. We're coming through our relay, through some fuses, and we're going to our R1, which is a real, our, um, an element, our dry heat elements, and they're all interconnected through here. And then if we follow circuit two, which is K14, we're coming through here, and this is also going to our dry heat elements. So that's telling me the problem is probably somewhere here with these elements. So if we go even further, let's study this relay. What else is attached to it? So we have our DC voltage here for our coil. And they're basically coming off of here. They're going into our main board. So nothing there would cause that board to blow. And none of our fuses are blowing. Okay, so that tells me we're having some kind of a dead short. Obviously not a dead short, but some kind of insulation issue. Okay, something's not insulated correctly and probably steam's getting to it. And then if we follow these elements here, go to K12, K14. So let's go find K12, K14. That's right here. And you can see here, K12, K14. Okay, so let's trace this guy back. And if this goes back to our L1, then we know we're on the right path here. So if we follow this, and you can see through here, we're right at our L1. So we've just drawn the complete circuit. So, and actually the first time this guy blew, it actually blew this contactor as well. Okay, so the issue could be here, it could be in these relays, or it could be in these elements. Uh, I'm leaning toward it's going to be in one of these elements just because the intermittent shorting is just the spacing between it's so far apart every three weeks. Um, so let's go there and let's go examine these elements a little bit further. All right, so we're going to start by testing this dry heat element here. So we have two of them, a bottom and a top one. Uh, those relays are connected to the bottom one, so that's where I'm going to focus my attention. So they kind of coil around a little funny, so you have to actually follow it. So Because you want to make sure you're testing the right one. And how it goes is, there's six terminals, so the, the top and bottom are together. And then the second from the top, second from the bottom together, and the two middle ones. Okay? So we're going to do an ohm test here. I'm going to remove all wiring from the circuit so we don't get any back feed. All right, so let's go ahead and ohm this guy out. So we're doing the top one, I've marked it with tape, black, white, and red. Top one, 8.7. This second one is 8.4. And now the middle one, or the red element. And we're getting 17 ohms, so we definitely have an issue here. All right, but it's not enough to trip the breaker. So let's go ahead and do a test with the mega. So the black element, which is the top one, let this stabilize. So we're above 500 mega ohm. I'm good with that. We're gonna go test the white one now, which is the second from the top. 
and I just marked them with tape just so uh, you can see better in the video which element goes with each other and we're getting yeah over a thousand mega or it'll be one gig I guess so that element is doing good now let's test our red element and see what's going on and we're getting 2.4 mega ohm so there is our problem that's why we are shorting out this breaker intermittently steam's probably getting in there so I'm just going to cap off that red element so that they can use the oven in the meantime so they'll be down one element so if we have six total elements they'll have five out of six I'm just going to test to make sure the relay didn't blow closed again so we're getting 23 amps here on the element and how I'm going to test to see if this relay failed closed is I'm just going to simply open the door when we open the door it should open the circuit and we're still getting amp draw right here we should be getting zero amps at this point okay so this relay is blown in the closed position so I'm gonna go ahead and change out the one relay okay I do have one of these on my truck thankfully until I can come back with the element and the other relay I'm gonna change both eventually um, this bottom wiring the brown and the white it's DC voltage so that means we have polarity you cannot reverse these two wires so make sure you're taking pictures before you start I've marked my wires there with the red tape on top you can see just get in the habit of taking pictures of all the wiring it's very easy to mess something like this up and you'll be chasing that schematic to try to figure out which one is brown which one's white because that doesn't show the, um, the the wire colors on the schematic all right so let's pop this bad boy in and let's see if we're still getting amperage on the element when the door is open alright firing up the oven here and let's see if we can at least get them going till I can come back with the parts Right now we're just waiting for a call for heat. We got the call for heat there. 24 amps. Relay lights are solid green. Which tells us we have a call for heat. If not, they'll be flashing. Let's open up the door. And we have zero amps here. So we're all good here. I'm going to test all three elements. Zero amps on element two. And actually there's only two elements because I've disconnected one. So at least we can get the customer up and running. They'll have five out of six elements working. That'll be enough to get them by. And I will come back probably in the next two days with uh, an element. All right, so I'm back on site here. I've changed the element and that second relay put everything in new and we're just gonna take our amp draws and make sure that none of the relays have failed close because I did have that other relay that left relay I left in so I just want to make sure that one didn't blow in the interim since it's been the last two days so we got 24 amps open up the door zero amps perfect we're gonna go check the other two elements now and let's see if our relay is still good or did I blow that new relay? Okay, so right now we're just waiting for a call for heat. Got our call for heat, 24 amps. Open up the door. Bang, zero amps, perfect. And we're gonna go test our third element now. And make sure it's that really is not failed to close because we will trip the high limit and we will get called back and it'll probably take a while to trip the high limit and we'll probably be you know an hour away and we'll have to circle back so here we go 23 24 amps open up our door zero amps bang perfect we're all good here all right so super interesting service call there
All right, so I think that was the third or fourth time on site. It was my first time on site. Now, the previous tech, when he got called back the second or third time, the electrician actually met him on site. They went over the entire oven. They could not really figure out what's going on with um, with the oven. Um, they confirmed there was nothing wrong with uh, any of the wiring from the electrician's end, nothing wrong with the fuses or that disconnect box. So um, the call got transferred to me when we got called back, I guess it was about a week ago. All right, so basically I think what was happening was steam was getting in that element and it was taking like weeks and weeks to build up the steam. So when we went, went to do the mega test, it showed that uh, we weren't insulated correctly inside of that element. Uh, as you can see, we're getting like over 500 mega ohm on the two other elements. And then that one was giving us 2.4. So the steam was actually acting um, like a conductor and it was shorting the element to the casing of the element, causing that main fuse to blow. Uh, it's really hard to blow that main fuse, 125 amp fuse. We weren't blowing any fuses in the oven. So it was telling me it was a dead short once the steam was getting in there, once the steam would evaporate, which means when we're getting on site, we're getting no shorts to ground. Uh, even the element was ohming at 16 ohms. So that was a little bit high, but even at 16 ohms, uh, it's not enough amperage to blow that 125 amp fuse. So it was pretty cool to use the Mega on this call. It's something I don't use. Uh, it's definitely something I'm going to start using for situations like this. It's not often. We maybe get two, three service calls a year where we get the breaker tripping intermittently. So it's going to be nice to be able to use this tool going forward.